What's up, nerds? Welcome to another MIT App Inventor 2 tutorial. Today, we're going back to the basics. So if you watched any of my other videos and that brought you to this one, just be in for a treat on going back to how to draw on a canvas after taking a picture and putting that picture onto the canvas. So the purpose of this is to educate new programmers on the functions of a canvas and its ability. Because in my previous video, link in the description of that, my Pictionary app, I didn't really talk about how the canvas works and some of the basics that it can do. We're going to go back to that. Before I go into the um, design of the app, the next video, I need ideas from you guys. I have two ideas myself, well, one, which is Google SketchUp building fun, where I would just design something in Google SketchUp and talk about how it works, because I educated myself on how it works, and I think other people should be educated on it as well. It's a 3D design program put out by Google, because it's Google SketchUp. Ha. So, suggestions from you guys. What do you want to see? I want to make more videos, but I need to know what to make the videos on. Please help. All right, so let's jump right into the code. So, back to doing it the old school way. Start new project. We're going to call this one Canvas. No, not Canvas. Photo, not Editor, because it's not an editor. It's only a drawer. So, we're going to call it Photo Drawer. I did separate the name with an underscore because you cannot have spaces in app names. There you go. It opened up right away. So, right off the bat, before I do anything else, I am going to align horizontally to center this. So, everything I place will be put in the center. First off, we're going to put in a canvas. I'm doing this first because it is at the top. It's under drawing and animation. And we're going to change the dimensions on this bad boy. So height, percent, 50%. The reason I'm doing this is by default, when I tested this, my phone took the image and stretched it as well as rotating it. The rotating I could not fix, but I have a little bypass for it that'll help. And then width is going to fill parent because... It's, it's almost a perfect square. Almost. Next, we're going to put in a layout horizontal arrangement so that everything looks nice and neat. And from here, we're going to put a user interface. We're going to have text button for one, two, three. Three buttons. And finally, below that, we're going to put in a little slider. Now, me being organized, I'm going to name these buttons really quick. Rename. Save. Rename camera and I did make a boo-boo I like to have the camera button on the left oh wait camera is a component so camera B there we go so we're gonna switch button one and button two just because I want to have the camera closest because it goes in order of what you will do camera save clear next texture button three is clear look at that and then I did not mean to put in a slider I meant to put in a spinner I apologize so we're gonna put in a spinner now I'm gonna call this spinner colors and once that is in we're gonna add one final element it is under media camera and you're gonna go that is your design layout you have three buttons I forgot to change the text of the buttons I only rename them save not save I don't know why save is coming up first but it's coming up first hey everybody makes mistakes Camera, save, oh, that mechanical keyboard, and I named clear with the renaming it, ooh, and that bugs my button, okay, so, done with that, now we're going to go into the code, first off, we are going to make the canvas drawing function, so, I'm going to open your canvas, when touched, t just touched in general, you're going to call canvas dot draw a circle so you're just drawing a dot where you did your thing which is cool right so center X is just going to be the X of wherever you touched this is like picture you're on a grid and you have your X which is the bottom axis and your Y which is the up and down axis you're just putting a dot at the point where you touched and then your radius I'm going to do three so it's almost the same size as the line. So what I'm doing here is I just click back on the white background, put in a 3, press enter, and it gives me a little 3 block. That's something MIT has worked on a lot to get it to work a lot better. 
All right, and fill true, or you just have a dot with an outline around it and a white center, which would look a little funny. All right, next we are going to do the line. So not only do you want to be able to dot your image, but you also want to be able to draw on it. So we're going to do when canvas drag, you're dragging your finger across. Draw line, starting with preview X. So what it's going to do is take your, the very first point your finger touched, or whatever touch, whichever point on the grid your finger touched last, and get its current position and connect those two points. So that in theory, you're just making a line. And that's that. Good to go. Next, we are going to do our camera button, I believe. Yes, let's do it. So, when camera B dot clicked, all we have to do is call camera, take a picture. Simple, easy, right? Right. All right, so next, we are going to make our clear button. And you wouldn't think you would need to do two things in this, but you do. So the very first one is call canvas.clear. This will delete all your drawings, but it will not reset your background. To reset your background, you need to just change the canvas color to white. So go down to the green blocks and set camera background image colors white. And you can copy this with control C and then control V to paste it. And we're going to change background image in the second one to paint color. And we're going to change white to black, so it goes back to black by default. Little healthy tip right there. So next, our final thingy, almost, would be our save button. So we're done with our buttons now, after this one. You're going to, when click save, and the first thing I want to do is make a global variable name. And I'm just going to call this save count. The reason I'm doing this is because if you save an image with the same name more than once, it'll overwrite that image because it has the same name. It's just like, uh, what's an example? On your Game Boy, back in the day, you went to save a file as, oh, Pokemon just beat this gym. After that, if you save again with the same name or just click on that file and save there, it'll overwrite it. So you won't be able to go back to your old save, but you will have your new save. With this, you have both. So, what we're going to do is just set this to zero. I can do that again by tapping zero and hitting enter. Sometimes it doesn't work, like I said, so you can just go up to the math, grab a zero. Simple, easy, fun. Now, there are two ways I could do this save button. The way I'm going to do it is without a notification, but I have a link in the below that taught me this saving method. There's a really cool guy on YouTube, he walks through it super simply, and it just, it's very helpful not only for me because I couldn't remember how to do it, but also for you guys, I will have a link to that in the description as saving method. So the first thing we're going to do is the control. When, we're going to use an evaluate but ignore result. So this runs whatever's next to it, but it doesn't tell you what it did. It just ignores it, but it did it. If you know what I'm saying. Next, we're going to call canvas dot save as. And you, this one, you can select your file name. So we're going to name our file in a weird-ish way using a join block. Three strings. So you're just going to go up to the top, add a string. The very first one is going to be text. I'm going to call this MIT picture. Next, we are going to have get global save count. So it's going to take the global save count and retrieve it. And then... We're going to add .png or .jpg. When I was testing this, .png did not save, so I'm going to test .jpg, not .jpeg. That's a totally different thing as far as I'm concerned. And now, what this will do currently is it won't change the save count. So it'll still just save with MIT picture 0.jpg. So what we need to do is make our variable increase. The best way to do this would be to set global save count. So you can just go over here, scroll, set global save count. We're going to grab a math addition block. We're going to get global save count. So we're going to take whatever the current global save count and we're going to add one to it. See, that time our one worked in the top left. Good to go. And that is your save button complete. And the final thing we're going to do is our spinner for color. And I know I keep going like to the right to add more blocks. I shouldn't. It's very unorganized. But that's just how I felt like doing it today. So the first thing we're going to do is find our spinner, which is colors. When colors, after being selected, we're going to make an if-then statement. And we're going to use if-else blocks. So 
we're going to have five colors. And you're going to need to hop back to the designer here. Just I completely forgot to do this. So we're going to put in multiple elements right here. So the first thing we're going to do is elements from a string. We're going to have colors, because it's the name of the spinner box. Red, blue, green, black, white. And then your prompt will be colors, and your selection will be colors. So that, what that does is it automatically sets it to colors, so that it says colors on the spinner. The, the spinners in MIT App Inventor aren't the greatest, but they work. So now we have five colors. That means we need five else if statements. Well, four technically because your first if statement. So else if, else if, five statements. I'm just going to skip over this. Well, after I show you how to do it, of course. The first thing you're going to do is get a green logic equals. So what this does is test if the first connector plug is equal to the second connector plug. So what we're going to do is get our selection. You can just hold over the red selection plug it in. That will take whatever the user selected out of the spinner. So say the user selected red, we're going to put in the text equal to the same as what you have in the spinner, in my case being red. And then what this will do, we'll set the canvas color, paint color, to go over your colors area, and get red. And we're just going to do this repeatedly. You can copy and paste if you really want to, which is what I'm going to do down into your boxes. All right, as you can see, I changed all the names to their corresponding selection and the corresponding color. Make sure you spell these names right or it will not work. The code is very iffy on that little aspect. And now into testing. All right, as you can see here, what we are doing is first drawing, as you can see, all the colors work. The picture was taken, but it was rotated to the left. I cannot find a way to combat this. I have tried screen orientation in portrait. I have tried locking the app to scrollable, non-scrollable, rotatable. I have tried to set the canvas size to automatic, and none of these have fixed it. My best fix, because it rotates to the left, would be to take your picture, say you want to edit it in portrait, or you want to edit it in landscape, turn your device one rotation, 90 degrees, to the left. So if you want your fa phone facing straight up and down, take your picture with your phone turned to the left in landscape mode. This is most likely with your home button or the bottom of your phone facing to your right and the top of your phone facing to the left. <laughs> Doesn't always look the best, but hey, pictures come out sometimes better in landscape. Now by default, your phone will save the base picture with no edits on it, which is most likely very helpful, but also your phone, the save button will save it when you take the picture. Now, the picture, because it's MIT App Inventor, MIT isn't made very well with external apps, will not save right away. What I did to get this to work was either screenshot the picture, so you can just crop it with your on-phone editor. Every phone should have an on-phone editor. Or, you can close the app and reopen it. When I did this, all the pictures came back. And I don't mean just hit the home button and go into it again. You have to completely shut down the app, whether this is going into settings and force stopping it, or just double tapping your multitasking button on, on new phones and swiping it away. So I hope that was helpful. Um, finally, I want to thank you all for your ideas for your ideas, your support for staying with the channel. We're almost at 150 subscribers and I haven't put out a video in over a month. That is amazing. And finally, I need your guys' ideas. Please help me come up with new ideas for these videos because these videos are currently how I'm paying for gas until my job starts up. So thank you for this. You guys are awesome. And yeah, have a great day. Peace out.